All right, listen up, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I know it's a little confusing, but what you're understanding, what we're doing is, we are talking about all, when the x values are true, right? So let's look at this first one. This first one is y equals x. Now, the student looks like they just kind of got rid of the whole x value. So let's just go and graph. Let's, let me just go and graph this again. And I'll kind of show you what I was, what I was asking for. I only, this, we said the domain was from negative infinity to infinity. That means every x value going all the way to the left, all the way to negative infinity, the largest negative number you can possibly think of, is always going to have a value on this graph. Because this graph goes to infinity. Now, what I wanted you to do is I only wanted you to graph this graph when my x values are less than negative 2. So let's look at this point right here. This point is when x is equal to 1. This point is when x is equal to 2. And this one is when x is equal to 3. Do those fall under this constraint? No. So what? guess what? We're going to erase them. I only, want the, I only want you to graph this when x is less than negative 2. So let's go where negative 2 is. right? So x is less than negative 2 at this dot right here. Now, looking at this inequality symbol, remember when we were graphing linear inequalities? When it's less than, does that mean it includes the point or does not include the point? It does not include. So therefore, we're going to leave the point open or closed? Open. open. So I make a nice big dot at x equals negative 2. I get rid of it. So all you guys had to do for this graph is erase the rest and then make an open dot. Now for this one, this graph originally looked like that, right? It went from infinite negative infinity to positive infinity. But I only wanted the values that are when x, the only values of x between negative 2 and 2. So I go to negative 2, and I go over to positive 2. And that's exactly what the student did. We only want to graph when it's between these two values. So I look at my graph, and I say, where are these two values? Now, they wrote dots, but I want to make sure they're um, prominent dots. It does x include negative 2? Yeah. Yes, it's equal to, right? So we're going to do a nice big dot. It doesn't include 2. OK? Now, the last one, this one was kind of difficult because um, you could see this one looked like that. So again, this student, I said, only graph when the x values are greater than 2. So I look at 0. At, at when x equals 0, I have this point. Is that a part of my graph anymore? No. no, it's a part of this function. But I, don't want, I only want to graph it when x is greater than 2. So I go to 2. And I say from here on. And that's exactly so the rest of this gets deleted. Does everybody understand that? Your graph, you can graph it first with infinite domains, depending on what the function is. Then I'm going to give you a constraint. All right? Now, what I'd like you guys to do, um, actually for time purposes, what I'm going to do is what we do is this is what we call piecewise functions. So what we do is we take three, two or three separate functions. And what we do is we break them down separately. Now, a piecewise function, all you're going to have to do for your homework, what you're going to work on, is graph them all on the same graph. So we broke it down step by step. However, when, at, when, br when you bring these all together, they create a piecewise function. So let's all graph all three of these on the same plane. Okay, So we know from this one, when at negative 2, when x was negative 2, it had a slope of down 1, left 1, right? So I go down 2, over 2, it had a big open dot, and it looked like that, right? Mm -hmm. But then, actually, between negative 2 and 2, though, we actually had a filled in dot, and it looks something like that, right? So actually, now this point is included, a part of that graph. Then the last one was at x is greater than 2. So I went up to 2. And it was um, up 2 should have been up 4, right? No, that was minus 1. So up 1 over 1, up 2, up 4 would have been the dot. So over 2 is going to be somewhere right around there. And that graph looks something like that. Right? It's part of like a parabola, correct? 
So what I did, ladies and gentlemen, is, is now I've written all three of these graphs all on the same plane. You guys see? I took each one of those, each part that was true for each constraint, and I wrote it on the graph. So how does this look? How do I ask, right? Remember I told you like when we did those problems, I say, hey, graph this, graph that. So how do I graph all three of them? What does it look like? It looks like this. f of x equals the first one, which is y equals x. So you graph y equals x if x is less than negative 2. Graph y equals negative 3 if negative 2 is less than x, which is less than 2. And then graph y equals x squared minus 1 if x is greater than 2. So this is what I'm going to ask you guys to graph. All right. And that's exactly how you do a piecewise function. You take each one of these graphs and you graph them. But you don't graph them on an infinite domain. You graph them on the constraint of the domain that makes it true. Does that make sense, Amber? Because you guys really need to understand this, because it's going to get very confusing when you try to do this if you don't understand it, because you're not looking up at the board when you have that. Graph each one of these functions, just like you guys did. But don't graph it for the infinite domain. Graph it for the constraint on the domain. Make sense? And we'll try one now, see if you guys can do it. Yes? Um, that dot right there, is, does that scale up or does follow through? Since it's true for this one, it's, gonna, it's, not, it's open for that one. But since this one makes it true, we're going to leave it closed. Okay? All right.